Hi everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Let us continue with the myeloproliferative neoplasm series. In my earlier two sessions, I have discussed about chronic uh, myeloid leukemia and polycythemia vera. Before that, we have clearly enumerated the differences between myeloproliferative neoplasms and myelodysplastic neoplasms. So, in continuation with this, today's session, let's learn a very important topic of myeloproliferative neoplasm that is essential thrombocythemia. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, let's learn about its etiopathogenesis, the clinical features, the morphology, how we diagnose and a bit about treatment of essential thrombocythemia. Essential thrombocythemia, as we all know, it is another myeloproliferative neoplasm, just like CML and polycythemia vena. It is a myeloproliferative neoplasm which is characterized by sustained thrombocytosis and that's why it's thrombocythemia. What is important to note that there is increased number of large mature megakaryocytes in a normocellular bone marrow. This is how we define essential thrombocythemia. Uh, some of the textbooks use the term essential thrombocytosis, but that's okay. The correct terminology for this is essential thrombocythemia. The incidence of essential thrombocythemia is around 1 to 3 cases per uh, 100,000 population, just like polycythemia vera. Usually, they occur in age uh, 60 and above, but yes, it can also occur in young individuals. Pathogenesis. 90% of essential thrombocythemia cases have mutations that lead to increased jack tag signaling. If you remember uh, the previous session where we talked about mutation in JAK2, right, in the case of polycythemia vera, similarly, here also there is mutation of JAK2 kinase. So, there are other mutations as well. Try to remember this mnemonic JAK might kill J for JAK mutation. M for MPL mutation and C for PAL-R mutation. Okay? So, JAK2 gene mutations can be seen in around 50 to 60 percent of cases of essential thrombocythemia. Mutation in MPL, MPL stands for myeloproliferative leukemia virus oncogene. This is seen in around 5 to 10 percent of cases, whereas mutation in CAL-R, which is Cal reticulin, it is seen in approximately around 30% of cases. So, what is important to note that there is increased JAK stack signaling. So, we have studied in detail about JAK stack signaling in my previous session. However, let me revise you what is JAK stack signaling. But one thing you remember, one thing is important to note that even though the JAK mutation is the same as that of polycythemia vera, we really do not know why some patients develop essential thrombocythemia, whereas others develop polycythemia vera. So let's let's quickly recap what we have uh, what we had studied earlier in about the JAK-STAT pathway. We know that that's uh, emetopoietic stem cell, and these are growth factors. In today's uh, context, let us consider that this is thrombopoietin. We have a growth factor, and then the growth factor receptor. Okay. And these are the intracellular stat proteins and the nucleus with its DNA. Now, the initial, the first step of JAK stat pathway is the growth factor. This thrombopoietin binds to the growth factor receptor where the JAK gets activated by phosphorylation. After this activation, the stat proteins are also recruited and they are activated. And finally, the stat will be dimerized. It dimerizes, the dimerized stat proteins gets into the nucleus or enters into the nucleus and then it activates genes responsible for megakaryocyte production. Okay. Whenever you have mutation which involves you know, JAK stat pathway, which means to say that what happens when there is JAK2 gene mutation? Basically, there is increased JAK stat pathway. No thrombopoietin is needed. Okay, yet there is uninhibited cellular proliferation. Similar with MPL mutation as well as Cal R mutation. Okay, all these three are the ones which are involved in JAK stat pathway. So mutations in any of these increases the JAK stat pathway. There is increased proliferation. There is uncontrolled proliferation of megakaryocytes. This is what happens in essential thrombocythemia. 
So morphologically, in the peripheral smear, what you see, basically there is varying degrees of thrombocytosis, more than 4.5 lakh per cubic mm. Atypical large or giant platelets, sometimes you know platelets without granules can also be seen. The marrow is very pathognomonic, you know, in its findings. It is normocellular. For that particular age of an individual, the marrow is normocellular. If at all, there might be slightly increased in cellularity, but by and large, it is normocellular. Marked proliferation of megakaryocytes it is what you see okay, in the marrow. There is increased proliferation of megakaryocytes. These megakaryocytes, you know, they are of irregular sizes and shapes. They are all large to giant forms. They have abundant mature cytoplasm. Some of them will have, you know, deeply lobed and hypersegmented, looks like a stagon kind of nuclei. All these are features of megakaryocyte proliferation. Remember, none of these are dysplastic. The the moment you see dysplastic features, we should think in terms of myelodysplastic neoplasms. So, this being a myeloproliferative neoplasm, you should never see dysplastic features. Okay, Delicate reticulin fibrils can also be seen, but then it is not as significant as much as what we see in polycythemia vera. Organs can be mildly enlarged. There, be, there can be mild spinomegaly and of course, that is because of extramedullary hematopoiesis. Now, how do these patients manifest? The, the clinical features is all because of dysfunctions of platelets derived from the neoplastic clone. Though you have increased cellularity, increased platelets, but then most of these platelets are actually dysfunctional. Thrombosis and hemorrhage are the major clinical manifestations. Just like what you see in polycythemia vera, the thrombotic episodes are similar to what you see in polycythemia vera, which could be deep pain thrombosis. The, you could have, I mean, the patient could have myocardial infarction or even stroke. They can have hepatic vein thrombosis, which manifests in the form of Bacchiari syndrome. They can have portal and mesenteric vein thrombosis, you know, which can result in bowel infarction. The bleeding manifestations are very subtle, could be epistaxis or bleeding gums, which are much, much more common. Life-threatening hemorrhages are extremely rare in cases of essential thrombocythemia. Now, how do you diagnose essential thrombocythemia? You have features, right? But then WHO has categorized into two different forms, major and minor criteria. There are four major criteria and there is one minor criteria. What are these four major minor four major criteria? One is platelet count more than 4.5 lakhs. The bone marrow biopsy shows all the features what I have just discussed before. Proliferation mainly of megakaryocytic lineage, absolutely normal erythroid and granulocytic lineage. And it should lack the other features of other myeloproliferative neoplasms. You, know, you should not have BCR ABL or gene mutation. You should not have features of polycythemia vera. You should now not have features of primary myelofibrosis, which I'll be discussing in my next session. And the last one is presence of JAK2 CalR or MPL mutation. These are the four major criteria. And minor criteria is you should have presence of a clonal marker or you need to exclude the causes of reactive thrombocytosis. That's a minor criteria. How do you diagnose? The diagnosis is based on presence of all the four major criteria. It's more than enough. But then if you have first three major criteria, you have not done the mutational studies, first three major criteria and one minor criteria is enough for you to diagnose thrombocyte essential thrombocythemia. I hope you got this clear, right? All four or first three plus one minor criteria. How do you treat essential thrombocythemia? Most often, it's treated with gentle chemotherapeutic agents, which basically aim to suppress thrombopoiesis, aimed to suppress platelet production. For example, you can use hydroxyurea. That is the most commonly used first-line drug, which reduces platelet count. You can use anagrelide, which selectively reduces platelet production. In pregnant women and younger, 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 younger people, you know, interferon alpha is used because it modulates immune response and also reduces megakaryocyte proliferation. Okay, these are the three modes. One of the few of the modes of treatment of essential thrombocythemia. Prognosis: Essential thrombocythemia is 
very indolent disorder long periods of asymptomatic uh, you know clinical features I mean, basically you don't have clinical features for longer duration of time they're not as bad as chronic myeloid leukemia or polycythemia vera the median survival is very long compared to the other myeloproliferative neoplasms it's around 12 to 15 years and thrombotic complications we have mentioned about thrombotic complications right but then these thrombotic complications are much more evident particularly when you have homozygous mutations which means both the copies of the genes are mutated and that is when you have higher incidence of thrombotic complications so that's all about essential thrombocytopenia it's a very simple topic if you have understood the concept of polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytopenia also is very simple it's just like polycythemia vera but then it is of milder you know degree as compared to that of polycythemia vera thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have anything to ask i shall be sharing the pdf version of this powerpoint presentation in my website please go and have a look at the website for more information and then if you find this video useful do consider subscribing and don't forget to share thank you